Well, welcome back everybody to another gear review. So today I wanna to talk to you about a blade and break down with you a blade that I took with me recently on a multi-day backpacking trip to the Snowy Range in Wyoming. It was a beautiful time, amazing, uh, gorgeous scenery, but it also gave an awesome opportunity to fully test out the SOG Aegis FX. This is the fixed blade rendition of the iconic Aegis pocket knife. Thumped on this hardcore, really beat on it. Have seen a couple aspects, I was like, okay, sweet. But uh, a lot of aspects that uh, I was very lackluster on, not super pumped about. One thing that kind of caught my eye right away was that this blade is very reminiscent of Amora. So I was like, man, we I took it with us. I was like, we got to try these both neck and neck. They have what seems to be similar grimes, sim similar handle kind of ideas. Right out of the gate, let's hit a few things that I was pleasantly surprised with. One is just durability. It's a very durable knife. It is a full tang construction all the way through. You can see the exposed tang back there. It's an eighth of an inch thick that they basically keep all the way through to the tip. Very tough, strong tip. I was happy with that. And just the overall durability level seem to be definitely there if you're just gonna beat and you know, hard use a tool in this size range of about three and a half inches of the blade length. Also the sheath. The sheath I was pleasantly surprised with. These tabs are kind of designed to quickly run through uh, an LBE system in Molly if you would like. So that gives you some compatibility there. And then it does have this belt clip that is 360 degrees rotatable. You can unscrew it and you can like, you know, move it all over the place, kind of like a blade tech lock. Uh, it's rather strong, but still got a little bit of flex to it. I was actually able to cross draw it on a day hike up on my stern or on my shoulder strap across my sternum. Uh, and that worked really well. It never you know, wanted to come off. It didn't cause any hot spots. And I like carrying a smaller compact fixed blade like this size. Uh, I like having it in that area. So that was nice. I could just literally just go boom, clip it on, use it all day and then good to go. And it is very quiet and then got a good thumb ramp, boom, pull it right out. So I was happy with the sheath as well. Now let's talk about the blade steel, but I wanna take a brief moment to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, which is Zolio and their satellite communication device. And I've trusted my Zolio satellite communicator for the past year, being able to use this many different times in different scenarios, and that if I injure myself, I have quick access to the SOS feature, and then I can communicate with the first responders, letting them know what's going on, knowing that it was received and giving them as much info as they can so that they're more prepared to help in an emergency situation, but also just the simple back and forth communication with loved ones uh, to let them know that I'm okay, let them know where I'm at, being able to not only pair it with my phone and if for some reason my phone isn't available, it dies, whatever, I can still use this standalone for those SOS features as well as the pre-programmed check-ins to let my uh, loved ones know not only where I'm at with GPS coordinates, but just that I'm okay. If you're hiking, backpacking, or you're preparing for the hunting season, or, or you're a backcountry skier or snowshoer, having the Zolio satellite device just gives you an extra peace of mind to not only yourself, but your loved ones in case an emergency situation arises or you just need to get the word out to your loved ones that you're okay. And so I encourage you guys to use that hyperlink below and check out that promo code, which will waive the $40 activation fee for the Zolio device. And you can see all the details, all the extra features that they offer with several different plans to fit just about every budget. And so with that, Let's go ahead and get back to it. As well as the grind. The steel itself is gonna be crowd treated 4116 uh, German made steel. The blade is made in Taiwan. Awesome to see that it's made in Taiwan. Um, but uh, that steel, it comes from Germany. It's a stainless steel. It is on the very low budget end of stainless steel. What I saw was that it held its edge pretty well and it was pretty tough. So the toughness of that steel and now that um, SOG and Cold Steel are under the same umbrella of GSM Outdoors, uh, Cold Steel has been using that for a long time, so I'm sure they're sharing recipes, like all that stuff. Uh, and so I, what I discovered was that it was holding up similar to like OS 8 or a good HCR 13 MOV type of heat treat and type of steel. So it was tough and we really thumped on it, really baton through it, just idiotic whacking it on you know, logs and stumps and things that you know you try to get burrs and chips and rolls, pounding through logs that really you shouldn't be pounding this through. And I was pleasantly surprised. What we did discover 
is that after all that, we got two tiny, tiny little burrs right here near the belly. Very micronic, really wouldn't affect the use right out of the gate um, and would be, you know, on a ceramic rod in a second would be able to be tuned up. In comparison though, I wanted to see how the stainless steel on the Mora would perform it. So I did the exact same test. I went through the same amount of wood from the same resource, same tree, did the exact same idiotic pounding on you know logs and stumps and knots and you know all that stuff, batoned. And we don't have a roll or a chip on the Mora. So it seems to be holding its edge slightly better than whatever uh, the 4116 is over on the sock. It got the job done for a basic stainless steel. Uh, and then the grind is really where it started to kind of come off the rails a little bit. When I saw it and originally purchased it, I thought I was getting a true Scandi ground knife. It is not. Can you see that huge secondary bevel there? There's a massive secondary bevel there, which means that the edge geometry is really bad. That it's a really fat behind the edge and it has to overcome this very short, thick grind the secondary grain right away and it is nowhere near competitive with a true Scandi like what you would get on a Mora or other blades that have a true Scandi. Uh, because of how short that shoulder is, if, if it had been what this knife should have had on it was either a full flat grind or it should have had a very high saber, you know, have a saber that's like three fourths of the way up and then give it a flat transition. That would have made the blade perform a lot better. It had difficulty with feather stick making, definitely couldn't do it to make a spoon, which we all did. I had to transition back to my Mora to do like a spoon. It did decent, you know, with like paracord and, you know, some cordage cutting, but uh, it just does not really perform because it has this very wide transition to then the flats that go all the way up. Whereas on a true Scandi, you may have that, but there's a zero edge there. Or if it's a high saber or, or a full flat, you have this much more gradual transition, making it perform a lot better. So the grind is just bad. It's just not a good grind to have on here. I've rarely seen it done this way. The other aspect is the handle. Now it's a, you know, a polymer gra glass reinforced mold over that full tang. So that's good. Uh, it's 0 0.5, so half an inch thick. I have other blades that are half an inch thick like that, but because it's so long and the transitions happen so quickly, it feels much more like a pocket knife. It doesn't really fill out the hand. And just for, for perspective, you can see the Mora is almost double. Uh, the Mora is going to be like 0. 8, 6. This is 0 0.5. So it's long enough with my large size hands. You know, I have plenty of real estate out the back. I was concerned about that exposed lanyard hole. Uh, I never came in contact with it. Didn't even cause a problem. I would have to come all the way back here to even contact it. So that was fine in that regard. Good jimping. You know, it's blocky, not super hot. And uh, you do have a little bit of jimp right there. So you could do like a draw cut if you're doing like fish, you know, uh, cleaning or something like that. What came, what was really the biggest issue for me uh, and you know, scallop. So, I mean, there was, there was thought done into the handle is this huge gap right here. What ended up happening with my large hands, and I'd share that with you guys because it gives a good reference. When I grip the tool, all of my pressure and my contact with the handle ends up happening here on my rear two fingers and these two front fingers float. They don't even come in contact. Right now, I am not contacting, this middle one particularly, is not even contacting the handle. It just sits there. Even in a hammer grip, the same thing happens. And so you're feeling a lot of undue, unneeded pressure back here on your two fingers. And you feel like these two fingers aren't doing anything. And you actually have to kind of push at a 45 into the guard here just to contact it. So you're doing this weird pinch move kind of to grip it and your middle finger is still floating. So for like a quick cut or something like paracord, you know, I'm tied up ugh, or something, you know, and I got to do that. Or, you know, I just got to like cut through a, a, a backpacking breakfast or something. Sure. No problem. But if you're going to do carving, whittling, feather stick making for a fire, you're going to do any sort of long-term cuts. It, it is not ergonomic and was not enjoyable to grip because of the way that cutting is. If it was fuller and it stayed longer and maybe just been a very gradual, almost like Puko design. Great. I would have been like, okay, yeah, the ergonomics are pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's just too much transition, too much of a gap. It narrows like more aggressively right there. For some reason, it just tapers super fast. It just causes a lot of issues on your two front fingers. Then the final kind of gut punch was the price. I went over to Amazon to pick this up to test out and review for us here at the channel. And I paid $88 for this blade, 88 bucks. Just for some perspective, I went over to my local sporting goods store and I paid $9.99 for this Mora. Regular going rate is $13. 
$13 MSRP for this Mora made in Sweden. Now I know Mora is kind of like an unfair comparison, but I'm just trying to give a little bit of perspective because I, I don't know how they charge what they charge and create what they create. It's kind of mind blowing, but just for some you know perspective, in, it's in that realm and I'm having to pay almost a hundred, I'm pushing a hundred dollars. Now, I don't know what's really going on. I saw some sales over on Blade HQ for going for $65 was the cheapest I could find this. That is probably a little more reasonable and especially if it was made like out of AUS 10 steel. If it was made out of AUS 10 steel and they wanted between, you know, and that was the going rate like 65 and 75 bucks, then I'd be like, yeah, for a little compact blade like this, if, if the grind angle was different and if the handle was slightly, you know, changed, then yeah, totally. Just for a competitive options perspective on pricing, here is a cold steel Finhawk with the exact same steel, 4116. Now, you know, they're both these brands are the same umbrella corporation, $22. Uh, this is a great uh, bushcraft, you know, blade, true Scandi, good full handle ergonomics. I really like the handle ergonomics on this. In some ways, I almost like it better than what's on the Mora's. Uh, just because it's a little more grippy and textile 90 degree spine sweet blade for around the 20 dollar price point and then here's the gerber principle made in the us with 420 hc true scandy grind again just a better fuller handle uh, that's going to go for around 60 to 65 dollars much more like what this is you know kind of going for i would say similar blade performance um in the sense of the steel but uh um, a true scandy and just feels a lot more ergonomic in the hand and you know carves uh, and, and does a lot better at the woods craft, still has a 90 degree spine as well. You know, hopefully there'll be some redesigns, maybe some renditions of this model. They've done it before, so I'd love to see that again. And I think, I think the idea is there with some fine tuning, um, then, you know, there's definitely potential, but as it stands, it's an easy choice to just go with a Mora or other blades that I've kind of listed earlier in the video. So uh, I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts though. What's your take on this blade in general? Uh, if you own one, what's been your experience with it? I always appreciate that. I invite you to check out the other video popping up and again, to subscribe. If you're not yet a subscriber, putting up content like this every single week. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.